Yeah. Oh, no, no. The second one was the, uh, the first one was the grandma. The grandma was saying, I can't believe he gives my granddaughter. But I'm glad she gave him the slap he deserved. So that was what the grandmother was thinking. Then the general, that was Purissima, if you can recognize him, he said, I don't blame the boy for teasing the girl because the girl was so beautiful. It's a shame that he slapped me instead of that boy. <laughs> And so here comes the uh, beautiful girl, and she was saying, I'm glad he kissed me, but he wished my grandmother had not slapped him for doing it. <laughs> so they were deep with us, and when they went up on the tunnel, the guy did not the, the, you know, hide his happiness. He was able to do the same things, two great, wonderful things at the same time, and he got away from those things, from doing them. And number one, he was able to kiss a girl, and number two, he was able to slap his commanding officer without getting any punishment. <laughs> so seize the moment, okay, seize the moment. Well, you know, um, that young soldier knew how to seize the moment. That soldier knew when to seize the moment. And uh, we, so we also have the kind of understanding, the kind of thinking that, you know, we can also seize the moment whenever it comes directly to us. But the problem is this. We are so busy with so many things. We are busy, we have deadlines, we have teachers, we have commitments to do, we have friends to go to, and uh, to enjoy life with. We have priorities, distractions, articles, and so many other things. And so we lose focus, and we never get the chance, you know, we never get the chance of enjoying, we never get the chance of living life, um, enjoying, you know, sitting the moment, the moment it comes to us. You know, advertisers know how to deal with this, you know, this passion. They know how to, they know how to get us. So they were able to make different, you know, different advertising materials out of this. Or different slogans. These slogans are, Who steps you can have a goal? Just do it. Satisfy your tears. Life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. So are we enjoying the ride? Are we seizing the moment that it comes, when it comes to us? Amen. Well, this morning we'll be discussing on first hour, uh, one Philippians 3, 9 to 14. And we will read together. Let's start from number 12. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward a goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Okay, thank you very much. Now, the thing is, um, in the life of Paul, we own the life of Paul, right? In this story, he would tell us three things of how we can seize the moment, seize the opportunity when it comes our way. And number one, number one of this, number one of uh, the first of the ways that he's telling us is to find our purpose. Now, have you found your purpose? What is the purpose of your living? If I were to ask you now, what is the purpose? Why are you here on these earth? What is your plans? What is your goal in life? What would be your answer? Well, many of us would say, well, I want to be a teacher, I want to, be, I want to do good in your job, I want to have a master's or a PhD and, you know, do better with my job and, you know, things like that. Well, those are given, those are given, but those are only secondary, those are only secondary purpose in life. When I ask you, what is your purpose in life, what is your reason for living? Okay, all of us should have reason for living. I don't know, otherwise, we don't have this kind of purpose driving us away to be life to the fullest. Everything is useless. You know, so, just to give you a little illustration, there is a pen, you know, just to tell you, I'm always traveling, uh, when I was younger, I always traveled with three things. Number one is money, number two is a pen, and number three is my wallet. No, cell phone. And this morning, I traveled without my phone and without my pen. <laughs> All the uh, money in the pocket. This is funny because it's the second time we go to Sarabuli. And the first time we went here, my charger was also left in the office. So I cannot charge my phone, it's, uh, it's dead. Then yesterday, uh, last night when I was preparing to come here, I realized that my 
chart the results in the office. So this morning I wasn't able to, I don't have any phone, it was a miracle that I was able to find early. So I'm anyway, going back. Now what is the purpose of the pen? When do we use a pen? Okay. And of course we're using pen. Um, not normally what we have is like, um, if we were given the choice, well, we're always choosing, or we always have the, the best pen, right? We always have this, you know, there's this gold pen. But when, when, when time comes and we're going to sign a check, or we're going to get our money, and we need a pen to sign, and this pen has run out of ink, we go back and use that ordinary pen, right? So, the golden big pen is out of ink. As a failure, it's not completely purpose. Same thing with us, without our purpose. Okay, without our purpose, uh, without purpose, our life will also be in, in vain. You know, without knowing, without fulfilling the purpose, a, a very good pen, okay, a very good pen, which cannot do its own purpose, is useless. Okay? And no matter how expensive the you know, no matter how expensive the pen is, if it is not doing its purpose, it's useless. I'm gonna tell you, in the business world, the more the more expensive the pen, it means the higher the profit you have. Alright? If your pen is good, if your pen is worth a thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand, fifty thousand, that means you are in a high return of the society. If your pen is ordinary, it means you're an ordinary person. Okay, that is the game in, uh, that is the game in the uh, you know in the, the social world. So, if, no matter what matter, no matter how much the pen is, if it does not serve the purpose, it is using the same thing with our lives. If we don't know where we're going, if we don't know what is our purpose, everything is useless. Now let us look, what is the purpose of Paul? Okay, what is Paul's purpose of living? Shall we go to um, verse 11 and 12? Paul says, I want to know Christ. So what is Paul's purpose? Paul's purpose was, I want to know Christ. And you know, so that I may be like him. Simply put, Paul's person for living was to be like Jesus. It's also, uh, this should be our relief. I mean, uh, this, is all, this should also be our reason for, you know, for living. I want to know Christ, yes, for the power of his resurrection, and has to make me suffering, so that the life is dead, and some more will be the resurrection of the dead. So, my brothers and sisters, what is the purpose of living? You know, I always believe that, you know, coming here with talent, God has called us here, not because, you know, that, not just because we're earning money, but Paul's is here because we have a purpose to secure in this place. You know, um, can you imagine different people from different backgrounds who gather together and build a church in San Abuelo? So do you believe that your purpose to come here is to be able to have a church like San Abuelo? You say amen for that? Amen. You know, we are different people. We have, you know, we have different characteristics. We work in different places. Yet we all come here together because God has given us a purpose to fulfill. And that purpose, you know, like what Paul has done in the past, is to, you know, to, to serve God, to be like Jesus. And we are very happy that in this place, you know, this small part of the world, there is one light shining for God. Now that is number one, let's find your purpose. We always have to think, we always have to think, what is our purpose? And I've been to Thailand for like six years. Up until now, I haven't, I still don't know, have I fulfilled my purpose in Thailand? But back then, I, I, I am really sure I want to serve God, I want to serve the Away. Now Away is okay, the Away is good. So I'm thinking sometimes, is it time for me to leave Thailand? Is it time for me to find a greater pastor in some other places? But again, we go back, when we go back, is it, does it matter to earn everything or to earn so much in the world and to lose your own self in the process of searching for, you know, for a better life? So we go back to that question again. So number one, that is purpose. Number two, what should we do? In Philippians 3, that's what he said, Paul has told us, is teaching us three lessons. Number one is find a purpose. Number two is forget the past. So in forgetting the past, there are two things that we have to consider. Number one is forget the bad. Number one is forget the bad. We all know the story, we all know the story of Paul's story and walking and not being used to just standing in here and, you know, talking. Uh, if we all know, Paul, he was the one who was torturing people, he killed Christians, he persecuted Christians. You know, back then, when God told them, they would just negative things is done, and get stuck with it, or perhaps even worse. But what he did was, he moved on, forget the bad things, and forgive. 
a better life. Um, forget the bad. Paul is like any investor. The bad has had a past to forget. His character is what he gives to people. He could either now he was left with two choices. He was left with two choices. He could either dwell in his mistakes and let them ruin his life, or he could start a new one, move on, and have his chance for effective ministry. All right, we always have two choices. You know whether we can always go back, go back and think of the negative things. Because you know these negative things they keep on stopping us from doing, living, into feeling life. Because if, you know whether we like it or not, these things haunt us down. You know every time we sleep, when we close our eyes and think of all these negative things, we can hardly sleep. Did it happen to you? So forget it. It won't. You know it can't hurt you anymore. It is done. It is over. You know. So we have to move on. I'd like to share you another story. Another story of um, Roy Rydles, if you know him. Um, in 1929, Roy Rydles was a football player. He was young, that's the question. Um, he was player, he was playing for California. He was playing for California State University. It was a football match during that day. They were fighting a game, so they were having a match with Georgia Tech. By the way, this is a commercial. Um, Dina's Philippines in Thailand right now. <laughs> you know, real basketball fans, and today is going to be a big game. Okay, it's a battle for the goal. But anyway, during a back then, there was also a game. There was also a game when it was against Georgia Tech and the California State University where Roy Michaels was playing. He was a team captain of the soccer game. And when he was when he was able to recover a fumble, he recovered the ball, and he got it. And he started running. He was so excited, you know, in running, he, he didn't realize that he was running to the wrong direction. He was not running toward his goal. He was running on the opposite side. And his friends, his teammates, were asking him, uh, Rigel, Rigel, Roy, Roy, come back, come back. It was too late and he realized that he was running at the wrong towards the rumbles and he was he, he you know he punched the ball back but it was too late. So to, to make the after 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 the uh, half game, 